God bless you. Amen. The song said, Lord, help me to hold out until my change has come. Certainly, we thank the Lord for that song. Thank God for you again. And uh, yes, our change is coming. Amen. We just have to wait on our change because he may not come when you want him, but he is indeed an on time God. And we thank God for that song. As we uh, prepare our hearts and our brothers and sisters for the word of the Lord, amen, on today, amen, we trust and hope, amen, that you, amen, have, uh, you're ready for a word, amen, you're ready to hear what thus said the Lord. If there was a time we need a word and not just a word, but we need a relevant and a rhema word for the time in which we're living so many things are going on and so many things are happening. Amen. Amen. That time certainly is now. And so, my brothers and sisters, if I could call your attention uh, to uh, the book of Acts, the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, Acts 17, 17th chapter and verse uh, 25 and we probably will read verse 26, but I will just read that into your hearing, and I do not need the technician to put that on the stream, but it reads Acts 17 and 25, and also, amen, uh, the gospel according to Luke as well. We'll be reading into your hearing out of chapter 10, verses 29 and 37. I'll start with Acts 17 and 25. And it says, neither is worship with man, men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life. I want you to make sure you catch that. Sin he giveth, who giveth? God giveth to all life and breath and all things and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Let me read that again. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Sin he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the beloved physician, the 10th chapter, we'll read until you're hearing verse 29 and verse 37. Verse 29 says, but he, he who, he, Jesus, willing to justify, I'm sorry, he, he being the person that inquired of the matter, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And who is my neighbor? And verse 37 says, and he said, he that showeth mercy on him then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Father in heaven, we come at this time to say thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your, your mercy. For we are nothing without you. We're like a ship on the ocean without a sail. We don't take what you do for us for granted, for we are indeed 
appreciative and grateful for all the many things that you have done for us, whether they be small things or whether they be large things. For we are thankful indeed for you and for what you've done for us. We thank you for allowing us to be in the land of the living. We thank you for allowing us to have a roof over our head. We thank you, God, for allowing us to have food and having access to food. We thank you for having the activity of our limbs. Thank you that when we slept through the night, you covered us and you held back the deaf angel. And we were able, amen, to wake up this morning with our mind stayed on you. Now, God, we ask your anointing upon this, your servant, anoint these lips of clay. May we say the things that you would have us to say. And Lord, what you don't want us to say, may we not say those things, but we want to be indeed in your spirit. For you are the potter, and this, your servant, is just the humble clay. Mold and make this message what you would have it to be. And God, if you do these things, we'll praise you, give your name glory, give your name honor. And may the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart, may it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. My brothers and sisters, um, thank you again for being on our Zoom service on today. I want to talk to you from out of the word of the Lord today and want to speak to you from the subject, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Now, my brothers and sisters, in 1969, the late Benjamin Elijah Mays pen a book entitled Disturbed About Man. In this book, uh, Dr. Benjamin Mays says that he is not disturbed about the devil that comes uh, with a pitchfork and with horns protruding out of his head. However, he did say that uh, that he is certainly concerned about, about uh, the person or the devils that exist out there. They don't have pitchforks. They don't have horns coming out of their heads. But he's concerned, he said he was concerned about those devils that were tuxedos, were three-piece suits, and evening gowns. And if I may add, in light of the recent event that took place in Minnesota and Minneapolis, may I add also, amen, those persons, disturb about those person in police uniforms. I am disturbed about humanity as it relates to human beings treatment toward other human beings. God is certainly disturbed about humanity and about humanity's treatment or human beings treatment toward one another. God meant for all of mankind a man to treat one another right. God meant, he said, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And as you know, we've been taught even in school the golden rules. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. My brothers and my sisters, it is Brother Poole, as if we're reliving what happened five years ago with the incident that happened with Eric Gardner. 
It's as if it is deja vu all over again. When we all saw some five years ago the public video of the execution of Eric Gardner some five years ago, and then now, not just Eric Gardner, but the recent public execution of George Floyd several days ago. It gnawed, I need to, can I be candid? Can I be transparent? Can, can, can I be transparent with you? It, it, it gnawed at the very essence, come on somebody, of my being. Because if you are about humanity, and if you are about doing what's right unto your fellow man, what you saw just the other day through that public video, amen, that should bother you. That should, amen, that should upset you, righteously upset you, amen, because of what we saw. Because in that video, we saw something, amen, that appeared to be as if a person was an animal. Hello, somebody. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And oh, and let me say this before I go any further. You, you need to understand that pastor, pastor is a little warm. Yes, pastor is, is, is righteously angry, amen, at what he has been seeing here lately. Angry about what happened to Mr. George Floyd. Angry, righteously angry, amen, with that act, that criminal Barbaric act that happened to Mr. George Floyd. I'm, 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 I'm certainly, amen, bothered by it. And I know God is bothered by it. Our country, my brothers and sisters, our country, I know this is Jubilee Sunday, and you might say, Pastor, this ain't no Jubilee message. No, it ain't a jumb uh, uh, Jubilee message, amen, but it's a relevant message. It's a message that you and I need to hear, amen. It's a message that we need to, amen, that we need to talk about. It's a message that we need to, amen, we need to discuss and and and, and dissect, and, 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 and amen, and deal with it and not continue to push it, amen, under the rug. We got to bring it to the forefront. We got to let folk know, amen, that enough is enough, amen. We got to get to the point, come on somebody, where somebody's going to stand up and somebody going to say enough is enough, amen. We're tired of seeing, amen, our black men and our black boys and black women and black girls, amen, being treated, amen, in an undignified and an inhumane way. Enough is enough. This country has a problem with people that have been sun-kissed. That is to say, we've been in the sun a long time and we have from it, we have brown, we have black and, and, and all of that. And so something, something, uh, Minister Judd, uh, historical, is happening in this country about the treatment of black and brown people. Eric Gardner, some five years ago, was choked to death. And Minister Watson, 11 times, he cried. He cried out and said, I can't breathe. George Floyd just recently was choked to death. Breath cut off. And he cried out nine times, I can't breathe. Officer Chavin were unmoved by the cry of Mr. Floyd. Officer Pantella, during the 
Eric Gardner event was unmoved by their cries. It's as if you have someone down on the ground as if they are an animal. And a life, a precious life of a man or woman, whether they be brown, black, yellow, or whatever color, is more precious and more valuable. And you can't have so much disregard for their life. And my brothers and sisters, we must understand that people of color in this country. I'm going to say it. I know, I know, I know, I know. Amen. I might, we might get something on the social media. If we get it, that's fine. Amen. But I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. Many people of color in this country have been choking for, listen, have been choking for a long time. Choking for a long time. We've been mistreated for a long time been taken advantage of for a long time, have been dealt with unjustly for a long time. And enough is enough. We've been choking for a long time. We've dealt with it for a long time. And you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, and I know, I know, I know, I listen, I am not by any means, I'm not by any means condoning, I'm not by any means promoting what you're seeing happening in all of the different cities, but you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, America is in a chaos right now. As I'm standing before you now, America is in a chaos right now. There are countries all across the United States of America where people have witnessed and seen the, the ungodly, the, the brutal and cruel act that was done to Mr. George Floyd, who, by the way, who, by the way, who, by the way, uh, who, 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 by the way, when they took him into custody, they, 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 they this, this officer had the audacity to pin him to the ground and had his, had his knee and all of his weight on his neck. And this man cried out nine times, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And the thing that really bothered your pastor, my brothers and sisters, is that there were many people that were there that saw what was going on and they did nothing. They did nothing. One man had the audacity and had the, and I'm so thankful that the man, he did what he did in terms of filming, in terms of filming the event. Because had he not filmed the event, uh, my brothers and sisters, then, you know, we would have been here on another side. But, but the bottom line is his knee with all his weight was on top of the man's, on the back of his neck, as if, as if you had an animal down there. As if you had an animal down there pinned to the ground. I remember when I used to, when, when dad told me, dad said, son, I want you to, I, I want you to go out there and, and get one of the, get one of the chickens and I want you to kill that chicken now. And then the way I had to kill the chicken, y'all, I had to grab the chicken by the neck and I had to spin them around and, and all of that. That, that, that bothered me even then. And so, and, and so that was with the chicken. And then dad would tell me, son, uh, I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to let you kill the hog. And I'm, I'm going down to the pen and dad give me the gun and and I, and I put in the gun at the at the hog and and in the pig and and he's in the pen and he's looking up at me y'all and and I had the gun in my hand and guess what I didn't even have I didn't even have the courage and have 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 the courage to to follow through with that amen 
of slaughtering the hog and pins. Her dad had to grab the gun for me. What are you saying, Pastor? Listen, I have compassion even on animals. Amen. Amen. And some, and just the other day, we had a butterfly that got caught in our garage. And Amen. And I had to, and my wife said, honey, there's a butterfly there. And, and we could have killed the butterfly, but no, I didn't kill the butterfly. I, I, I took the butterfly and I, I put him right in my hand. And then I took him to the garage door and I released him. What are you saying, Pastor? Compassion. That's something, my brothers and sisters, that, that many people seemingly have lost and many people seemingly uh, don't have, and it's running kind of short. And, and you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, and I, and I know I know, America is in a chaos in cities across the country. Amen. There's rioting going on. Amen. There's looting going on. And I don't promote in any way, amen, rioting. I don't promote in any way, amen, looting. Because you know what? I believe that you can peaceably peaceably get your message across as a amen as Martin Luther King did during the civil rights movement amen nonviolent and that's how we should be it should be we should be in a nonviolent mode amen but you got to understand my brothers and sisters everybody don't have the Holy Ghost and the people that don't have the Holy Ghost the people don't have the Holy Ghost and don't have his grace and don't have his presence amen they have gotten to the point that they don't hit the boiling point and they're saying enough is enough. And you got to understand that what's happening, my brothers and sisters, in New York City and also in Los Angeles, California, Miami, Florida, Washington, D.C., close to the White House, in Atlanta, Georgia, Salt Lake City, even just recently here in Durham, North Carolina, last night, in Raleigh, uh, people have said enough is enough, and they're they're protesting, and many people are trying to maintain. There's some everybody that's out there are not are not being valid, but some people that are out there they are trying to uh, get across their message in a non-valid way, and I believe non-violence is the way that we should go. Amen. I, I believe that. I, I believe that. I, I'm not saying that we should be quiet. I'm not saying that we should just, amen, sit and do nothing because that's part of our problem. Amen. That was the problem that happened with Mr. George Floyd. That was the problem that happened with Mr. Eric Gardner. Some folk just chose to sit quietly and do nothing. Amen. And as a result of the do nothing attitude, look at where we are now. Look at where we are now with the do nothing attitude. Because with a do-nothing attitude, we find many of our cities are on fire. We find that many of our young people, our young people have taken up, amen, they've taken up this banner. Amen. The young people said we didn't have enough. That young people said that the president, listen, he hasn't even spoken and called for any calmness, amen, in our country. Amen. He's not saying much. He's on Twitter calling people thugs. You know what I'm saying. He said, and, and then he's giving quotes about, well, looting comes shooting. Amen. Rather than being calm about it and trying to exercise and implement peace in the situation. Amen. But you got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that these are indeed the last and evil days. And we got to understand that there's so many things that are happening in our society. On top of the COVID-19 event, where you have the 40 million people, 40 million people that are out of work and have filed for unemployment. Amen. We have chaos and crisis in America. On top of the fact that we have, even now, we have 16 million people Amen. Young people that are, amen, that are needing food. And we have countless people that are homeless. Amen. Compounded with all of those things that's going on. Amen. And then you have this event to take place. The event where somebody just takes this innocent man's life. I, I know you might say, well, he was doing something that was wrong. But listen, y'all, there's nothing that he could have been doing wrong that 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 should have resulted in him losing his life because everybody deserves a chance to live 
That's what breath is. My brothers and sisters, you got to understand that when you talk about the breath of life, what we're talking about when we talk about the breath of life, we're talking about, amen, the ability to breathe in, come on somebody, and the ability to exhale. And so God gives, as we see over here in Acts 17 and 25, amen, it says this, it says, neither is worship with man's hand, as though, amen, he needed anything, sin and giving, give it, give it to all life. He's the giver of all life. Amen. Life comes from God. Amen. He gives life. And catch this, he also not only gives life, but he also gives breath. And you got to understand that, yes, Eric Gardner, God gave him life. And not only did God give him life, but God also gave him breath. Yes, yes, George Floyd, God gave him life. And God also gave him breath. It is a real tragedy, my brothers and sisters, when a person in a uniform is intoxicated with power. Officers that are, that are civil workers that are there to protect the citizens, they should be there to protect the citizens, to execute judgment, but protect the citizens. But with your uniform on, you, you don't have a right. You don't have the right to treat anybody in an inhumane way. You don't have a right to treat anybody like an animal. And sometimes, and I'm not saying that that's the case with all officers, all police officials, or but in this case, this person, Siobhan, this person, he was intoxicated with power. And again, I'm bothered, I'm bothered, I'm bothered that when people just sit by and do nothing. Well, Pastor, what's my, what, what, what should I do? You are your brothers and your sister's keeper. I think we, we got to realize that we, we have an obligation. When you see your brother down, you got to be there to do what? To pick him up. When you see your sister's going through a difficult time and, and, and she, needs your, she needs some substance, she needs some funds or something, food or whatever, you, you can't push her off on somebody else if it's within your power, come on somebody, to help them or to help her. Yeah, we push them off to the church. Well, let's send them to the church. But well, what about you? Can you help them? Can I help them? Amen. Amen. We, 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 we're so quick to push people off, and we're so quick, come on, somebody, to look the other way. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in the story, amen, over in Luke, and that's where we, we were earlier when we were reading. You got, you got to understand that you have an obligation. I have an obligation. You, you got to understand, amen. That's, that's why I said, I, you know, I, I can't breathe, and, and you, you got to understand. And, 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 and until we get to the point, come on, somebody, that, that there's justice for all, till we get to the point that everybody is treated, come on, somebody, treated in a just manner, regardless of the race, the color of their skin or gender or ethnicity, until we get to that point. We got to get to the point, say, I, I can't breathe. I, I, I can't just sit back and, 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 and just enjoy life, amen, and do nothing. I got to do something to help. And so the Bible tells us of the story of the Good Samaritan. And it tells us about a lawyer that came to Jesus over in the gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. And I'll kind of summarize it. And this lawyer came to Jesus and asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, he said, what is written in the law and how readest thou? And he gave him all the Ten Commandments and all of that. And then he said it unto him, he said, thou has answered right, Jesus said. You, 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 yeah, you've answered right. You've given all the Ten Commandments. You've done that right. He said, he said this do and thou shalt live. But, but, then, but then this lawyer, you know how some folk do. They, get, they, they, they think they're smarter, smarter than the master. You know, a scholar thinking he's smarter than the master, smarter than the rabbi. He goes further. He said, now, wait a minute here. 
he said he was trying to justify himself here. He, he said unto Jesus, he said, well, who is my neighbor? I, I, I hear what you said. I, I gave you the commandments, but listen, I, I need to know who is my neighbor. And then Jesus gave them the parable. Jesus gave the parable. And he told them about a certain man that went from Jerusalem to Jericho. And in the parable, it tells us that the man fell among thieves. And it says that they stripped him of his raiment and they wounded him and, he, and, and, he de, and they departed and they left him, left him for dead. And you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that there are some folk, amen, that, that have that kind of mentality. They have that kind of disposition. They're not concern at all and and that's that's one of the things i need to kind of get across we we don't need to be thieving and stealing and amen i, I know i know what's going on i know that this is a bad time i know that we've reached the boiling point I, and listen just like you put water in a pot and you put rice in that pot and you put that lid on that pot and and that and that eye amen and temperature has been turned up amen eventually if you don't remove that lid that rice is going to move up to the top Come on, somebody, and it's going to spill all outside of the pot. Well, my brothers and sisters, that's where we have gotten, but we got to understand, and that's why we want to try to get the message across to our young people, amen, our middle-aged people, amen, and our older folk. Listen, there's a way that you protest. There's a way that you get the message out. Yes, I, I understand. I, I feel what you're saying. I feel because sometimes I can't breathe, and when you look out and see the, 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 the injustice, and you look out and see amen the unemployment rate when you look out and see what's happening with brown and black people and how they've been treated in a kind of way it makes you feel like you can't breathe what are you saying pastor it don't make you feel good about what you're seeing happening to the people and so the Bible says that this, uh, this, this man that fell and they left him for dead, the Bible says that, 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 that during that time that there were several people that came the way. He came the way. Uh, uh, Trusty Sewell, there were three people, three different types of people that came, that came by the way. And the Bible says, and, 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 and by chance, and the Bible says here, it says that they came by the way, a certain priest. Come on, somebody. I'm talking, that's a church, y'all. That's a church. That's a church. That's a church. Church can't sit back and, and do nothing. I know church, uh, well, well, we can pray. Yeah, we can pray. Yeah, we sure can pray. We can do more than pray. We can do more than pray. We don't know. We, we, we ain't going to be, we're not going to be rioting. We're not going to be taking, come on, people's stuff. And, and uh, we ain't going to be turning over no cars. We're not going to be setting stuff on fire. Listen, y'all, we don't need to be hoodlums. And you are being a hoodlum, like the lady, the mayor in Atlanta, Georgia said, this is a disgrace what you all are doing. This is a disgrace what you're doing. Looting, breaking into stores and looting in stores and going into the Ray-Ban store, going to Nordstrom's and stealing stuff and taking stuff out. I know you're upset. I know, yes, you get upset, but the Bible said, the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but violence taken by force. There's a way. And so this priest passed by, and the Bible says when the priest saw the man ahead of him. Now, this is the church, y'all. That's how we do sometimes. The Bible said that the priest walked on the other side. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, Sister Dash, I'm wondering, Elder Tyler, I'm wondering, Deacon George King II, how, how many people from the church, when, when, when the man had, had, his, had his knee in the neck of Mr. Floyd, I'm wondering how many people crossed over and walked on the other side to avoid what was going on. That's just a question. That's always just a question. So basically what I'm saying is that the church, as opposed to stepping in and stepping up to the plate, amen, amen, yes, we got to pray, and I know we got to pray, but we got to do more than pray, amen. We, we got to do, do some friendly kind of protesting. 
we, we, we got to let, we, we got to let the world know that enough is enough. Yes, we are the church. Yes, he said he will build, amen, his church, amen, on us, and gates of hell won't prevail against it, our brothers and sisters, but the question becomes, what else can we do? And then the Bible says that in addition to that, then there was a Levite, mm, a Levite came through. And the Bible said when the Levite saw the man who was near death, that the Levite passed on the other side. Mm, I'm, mm, mm, mm. But my brothers and my sisters, listen, I, I understand, but you got to understand this. It says, but then a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, the Bible said, he came where he was and he saw the man. And when he saw the man, he saw the man with much compassion. Aren't you glad that the Lord, when he saw us, that he looked beyond our fault and that he saw our need? And the Bible said that when the Samaritan saw the man, he, he not only saw him, but the Bible said, look at this, y'all, that the Bible said that he had compassion on him. And then he didn't just have compassion on him, but the Bible said he went to him. He went to him. He did several things. He didn't try to put the man down and put the man out, that kind of thing. He, the Bible said that he saw what the man needed. The Bible said this, he bound up his wounds. Mm, mm, mm. Somebody's wounded today. You, you know what's going on today? You know what's happening? You know why there's so much rioting going on in our society? You know why the young people are doing what they're doing? You know why the middle-aged people are doing what they're doing? It's because, come on, somebody, somebody's been wounded. They're wounded. They said that enough is enough. We don't, we don't have enough of this. We didn't have enough of this. We've been taken advantage of long enough. We've been mistreated long enough. And I certainly applaud their energy, but it, they got to rechannel it. Come on, somebody. They got to rechannel it, trusty Goodwin, in a different way. So the Bible says he bound up his wounds and then he poured oil in him and gave him wine and poured the oil and the wine in him and set him on his own beasts and brought him to the end, and took care of him. And then the Bible says on tomorrow when he was getting ready to leave, he took out some pits and he gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more. In other words, this Samaritan, the Bible says, amen. And so Jesus said this, he said, which now of these three? He was saying to the lawyer, he was saying to the lawyer, do you think the priest was more justified? Or do you think that the Levite was more justified? Or do you think that the Samaritan was more justified? Amen. And the lawyer said it was he. He said that he that showed mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. My brothers and my sisters, I, I got to close, but I got to say this as I prepare to close, and that it is that we as a people, we got to ask ourselves, what more can I do? Because there's a racial divide in our society. And you got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, amen, that many are standing in the margin of death. But we got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that if there ever was a time that we need, amen, to seek justice, come on somebody, for all people. The question was asked, I am I, my brother's keepers? And you gotta understand that we are our brother's keeper. And we gotta make sure, my brothers and my sisters, because again, what you saw and what we saw with the incident to Mr. George Floyd, it was just like a modern day lynching and broad daylight. And it took them so long to, amen, to offer charges against the officer. It, it shouldn't have taken them that long. And I can tell you, if it, was the re if it was reversed in that it was a black officer and a white citizen, oh, that charge would have came probably 
in a matter of a few hours. But you got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, amen, that justice certainly will be served. There's hatred in our society. There's a racial divide within our society. But my brothers and my sisters, we got to get to the point in God that we said enough is enough. We got to stand up for our fellow man. And we got to do our part to make sure my brothers and my sisters, where he said, I can't breathe. What are you saying, pastor? You got to get to the point in God when you see injustice, when you see people being taken advantage of, when you see people not being treated right, you got to get to the point that you say you can't breathe. You got to get to the point that you feel uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. I'm choking up a little bit. And the reason why I'm choking up a little bit is because I see I see what's happening to the black man. I see what's happening to the black young man and the black women in our society. My brothers and my sisters, we've gotten to a boiling point. Things have been heightened to another level. Have I got a witness in here? My brothers and my sisters, I can't breathe when I see what's happening to our people. I can't breathe when I see people in a state of unemployment. 40 million people filing for unemployment. Food insecurity. People cannot get access to adequate food. Oh, come on, somebody. When I see, when I see people of color being treated in an inhumane way. I can't breathe. I can't feel comfortable at the state that our society is now in. Well, Pastor, what can we do? What can we do? I'm glad that you asked. Yes, I am. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, turn from the wicked ways, then will I hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. What can I do, pastor? You can reach out to that disturbed, that disturbed brother or that disturbed sister and tell them that God, God has a better way, that God has another way of you getting your message across. You can tell them, come on here. Let's hold hands together. Let's walk. Let's walk. As a hymn said, let's walk together, children. Don't you get a weary. Let's walk together, children. Don't you get a weary. Let's walk together, children. Don't you get a weary. There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. I got to get out of here. I told you, this won't a jubilee message. I got to get out of here. But as I prepare to get out of here, I got to confess this. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I got to take my tie and move my button down. I can't breathe until I see, until I see, until I see that people are being treated, treated in a humane way, treated in a dignified way until I see that families are being catered to, until 
I see that little children are not being taken advantage of until I see that the black man and the black woman is not being taken advantage of. Why is it you pull me over? Because I drive, I drive a Mercedes and there's somebody else of another color driving a Mercedes and you don't pull them over. I'm talking about injustice. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I can't breathe. I need to exhale. I need to inhale so that I can exhale. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that finally they got some sense in their head and they upped the charge. They fired the officer. They charged him with third degree murder and manslaughter. And they're calling even now for him to have first degree murder. And you got to understand, you got to understand, Jesus said to that lawyer, he said, which one is more justified? And the lawyer said, the one that had mercy on the man. And Jesus told the lawyer, just like I'm telling you, he said, go and do likewise. And listen, you all, listen, I'm going to say this. You may not like what I'm about to say, but how dare those other three officers sit around while they're at that setting and allow that race, racist officer to keep his knee on the back of George Floyd's neck. That was wrong. That was inhumane. There's no, there is no justification for doing such a thing. And you got to understand that there's a certain segment of society that's after the black man. I got a grandson here. He needs to know that there's a certain segment of people in society that's after him. They're after the black man, they're after the black woman. And you gotta understand. So don't, don't, don't be hard-headed. Hello, somebody. Don't, don't be hard-headed. Listen to your parents. Go to school. Get your get your good solid education because let you you gotta understand that your weapon, your weapon in this society, in addition to there being a God on your side, that your weapon is going to be your education. One of the weapons is your education. You definitely got to put God first. But if you don't do anything, you stop going to school, you start applying yourself. Come on, I'm talking to the young black man as well as the young black woman. When you get to the point that I ain't doing nothing else, you stop going to class and all of that. Come on, somebody. You are setting yourself up for the enemy's plan for your life because his plan for the life of the black man. Listen, y'all, y'all got to understand. The black man, the black man, come on, somebody. We get, The black man is, is in for a whole lot because the enemies, the task of the enemy, the task of a certain uh, group in the white society is to incarcerate the black young men, incarcerate the black young women. And you gotta understand, he said, go and do likewise. And those three officers, Deacon King II, who sat around and did nothing while that man had his knee on the back of the neck of George Floyd, they need to be arrested and they need to be charged just the same because you are your brother's keeper. And if you, and, and you are not, you're not taught and trained 
to apply such cruelty to citizens. That's not what you, you've been trained to do. Enough is enough. For the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and violence indeed take it by force. My brothers and sisters, listen, listen. I know you're seeing all the things that's happening on TV. I'm getting ready to close. You're seeing all the rioting. That's wrong. There's a thing called friendly protests. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to do friendly protests. How can we do a friendly protest, for, uh, Pastor? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. We stop shopping at uh, at the wig store. Hello. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we decide we're not going to Nordstrom. We're not going back to Nordstrom. We, we, we're going to stop for a whole year. There's not going to be any purchases made by any blacks from Macy's, from Belt Tyler's, from the beauty store. Hello, I know I know some of y'all, y'all going to have to do something else. Hello. They don't give anything back to our community anyway. Some of them don't. But yet we pour into their we pour into their reservoir and they don't give anything back to us. Let us say, that that's what we need to do. We need to be boycotting. We need to be locking, locking hands and arms together like Martin Luther King did when he did the nonviolent marches. We need to be doing that because you need to understand the call, there's a call to action. Here it is, and here's the call of action, y'all. Look at it. It's on your monitor. Here's the call of action that's on here. The call of action. Here's our call to action. Call to action, July 7th, 2020. They're calling for National Blackout Day. The call to action names July 7th, 2020 as Blackout Day. And they're, and they're urging all the, you see what it says, they're urging people of color to withhold their money as an economic protest. We need one day of solidarity in America when not one black person in America spends a dollar. That's the message that's been sent out and I hope, I hope that you support it. I hope that you, yeah, put it on your calendar and July 7th, blackout day, blackout day. And they're gonna know, they're gonna know because you gotta understand, you, you, you gotta understand that we are inherently, we are a people and God made us the way he made us and we are inherently a people that deserve, come on somebody, that deserve to be treated much better than we've been treated. Enough is enough. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. It wasn't a Jubilee message but I can't breathe. You need to be righteously angry like I am about what happened. What happened to Mr. Floyd. And you need to do all that you can to help get the message across that nonviolence should be our method not turning over cars, not setting stuff on fire. That's not us. We're better than that. We're better than that. We are God's people and God's children. And we must uphold the bloodstained banner because this is indeed a day that the Lord has made. And I need you to understand, there will be justice. Justice will be served. Justice will be served. And I'm praying, God, serve justice. Will you j And join me, if you would, as we pray to pray to prayer today. We want to pray for justice. We pray for the Floyd family. 
And we pray for all those persons that's out there doing, uh, that's out there protesting in the wrong way. We're praying that they will catch the vision and that they'll do the right thing and, and, and protest in a non-valid way. Not all the people that are out there are valid. There are some people out there that are being non-valid, but they're, it's been overshadowed by the people that are valid. But listen, God bless you. Uh, I can't breathe un until, listen, as the song says, if I can help somebody as I travel along this way, then my living will not be in vain. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Hope you got something out of the message. I can't breathe. I indeed got something out of the message, and that message was for me. And please, let's remember July 7th, 2020, National uh, Blackout Day. All right, at this time, we thank God for you, and we thank God for, amen, all of, uh, all of you that are on the call and been part of the service, and we thank God for uh, our guests as well. We thank God for you being here, and, uh, and of course, uh, we just thank God for all of you, and, uh, and of course, I pray that you have a great rest of the week as we prepare to have prayer. Prayer changes everything. Don't be anxious. Pray instead. If God is for us, who can be against us? And, and, and please don't say pastor was upset. Uh, if you're going to describe me, just say pastor was righteously upset uh, because I am righteously upset and uh okay all right now listen i'm going to give you an opportunity if you have any uh real quick if there be anything anyone need to say any comments you're welcome to make comments i know sister williams has something she want to say sister williams go ahead i'll meet yourself just a special prayer for me tomorrow i'm going to uh uh, reaching the hospital for a procedure and just asking the saints to pray. Yes, ma'am. We will. We will. And I want to let you know it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Who else? Anybody else have a comment? Michelle. Michelle. Yes, Sister, Sister, Sister Sproul. No, and I have some, um, I have an appointment. Um, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, I have an appointment to have an MRI on my shoulder to see what's going on. I may have to be having surgery on it again. So I'm just asking the saints to pray for me. All right. Thank you, Sister Spro. would definitely do that. Any other comments um, uh, from anyone else? Any comments from anyone else? All right. Uh, any of our guests, does any of our guests care to have words? Any of our guests that joined us, you care to have words? Any of our guests? Any of our guests? Well, God bless you. Seemingly, everyone is satisfied. We thank God for you. And uh, as we prepare to have prayer, I believe we have also meditation scriptures up there as well. And uh, as we prepare to have prayer, we uh, ask that you prepare your hearts for our meditation scriptures. Okay, I believe it's coming, but I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and have prayer while they're trying to get that, uh, the altar prayer. Um, Father in heaven, we come at this time and say thank you. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for these, your precious people. We thank you for your word. For I gave your word to your people, reminding them that you are the one that gives life. You're the one that gives breath. And that you give us privilege and opportunity to, to inhale and to exhale. And God, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us, amen, that every life is precious and that we have an obligation we have an obligation to do unto our neighbor the way that we will have them to do unto us and god help us to show mercy 
and help us all to show mercy and look on our people. Yes, God, Lord. those that are out there protesting, yes, God, help them to do it in the right way. We pray that, that they catch the vision yes, Lord, and they do it in the right way. We pray, God, that you would just intervene and that, God, you would just simply uh, eliminate and distort violence yes. right now, the rioting and the looting and the yes. burning of cars and buildings. And God, we pray that, that you would just dispatch your angel, oh God, to intervene in that situation because someone's life is going to be lost as a result if, if this doesn't receive the downgrading that it should, it can get much more dangerous than what it is. We pray also, God, for our sister Williams, who set for a procedure. And God, you said in your word, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver them out of them all. I'm praying, God, that you bless her as she go through her procedure. God, I pray that you go before her now. May there be a good report. In the name of Jesus, may what the doctors think may it not exist. We're believing it by faith, and God, we're counting it done. For you are not only the giver of life, and this life that you gave, you're also a healer of the body. And God, we're just praying right now for her healing and her deliverance. Oh, God, we believe you now. God, our sister Sproul, who said to have a procedure as well. Go before her, God. Touch her now in the name of Jesus as she's prepared to have the MRI. I pray, God, that you be with her and, God, that you touch her body in the name of Jesus. Send healing and deliverance her way. And, God, we pray for everyone that's on the prayer and sick list, everyone that put prayers in the chat room. Oh, God, we just believe you now by faith. And, God, that you're going to move on their behalf. Oh, God, that you're going to intervene on their behalf right now. Bless every family member, Greater Walltown. We God, we pray also for the Floyd family. Oh God, that lost George Floyd. Oh God, to a senseless. Oh God, oh God, to a senseless act. God, we just pray for that family. Give them comfort. Give them grace and give them peace right now. In the name of Jesus. So in the midst of this storm, oh God, I pray that you speak peace. And God, that you cause justice to come. You know what happened. And you know the persons that rendered this senseless act. May justice be served now. And God, we're just believing you now. We're thanking you for all your many blessings. Yes, well, you're a good God. Yes. You're a kind God. Oh, God. Thank yes, you for my neighbor. Thank you for my brother. Yes, thank you for my sister. Yes. And may we do unto them the way we would have them to do unto us. Yes. But you told us to love our neighbor. As ourselves. Yes, God, do these things that we praise you, give your name glory, give your name honor. Yes, In your name we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I believe we have meditation scriptures. We have meditation okay. scriptures. Okay, we have meditation scriptures coming up. All right. Our Psalms uh, 91. All right. 91 is there. Okay, I certainly appreciate it. Let's see, Psalm 91, we thank God for you. Um, let's see, hold on a second, please. I believe we got the McClure's on the line. Sister Satanya McClure, are you on the line? I'm gonna ask you if you would to read the 91st Psalms uh, for, for us, and then I'm gonna ask um, Ms. Chavis. Sister Chavis, God bless you. Good to see you. Good to have you on the line. I'm going to ask you to do the reading for Psalms 121. So at this time, uh, Miss M Sister McClure, you would do, if you would, uh, Psalms 91, and then uh, Mr. Chavis would do our Psalms 121 meditation reading. God bless you. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'll be reading Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, and my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall... 
thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. For thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the, for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the, <laughs> of the wicked. <laughs> Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Sister McClure, we appreciate that. At this time, uh, Minister Chavis, uh, we ask her to read uh, Psalms 121. If you would, unmute yourself. There you go. Thank you. I will, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by night, nor the moon shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I bless you. Thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it. We thank the Lord for all of you, for our, for our guests uh, being here. Uh, thank God for you. And uh, and uh, First Lady, you want to say something to uh members. You know, I just enjoyed the Sunday school lesson and I enjoyed the message. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of you all. And remember, continue to put God first and justice. Do us right. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much again for being on the service call. We thank God for all of you. Uh, we trust and hope that you got something out of the message. As a reminder, please don't forget the options that's been put there for you to receive or uh, pay in your offerings. So please take advantage of that and understand that the uh, finance team will be at the church today from two to three. And, uh, and of course you can go by and uh, satisfy your obligation or you could uh, also uh, do the uh, Gillify as well as the mail. Also, I wanna say this to you. Uh, I think uh, we have been passing out masks and gloves. Uh, and part of the reason why we were doing that is because uh, many of you uh, found the gloves and masks to be uh, in, um, in, in hard supply or, or an insufficient supply, but now uh, the gloves and masks are being made more available. And so now that they're being made more available, you're, you're able to go by and purchase your own mask and your own gloves. And, uh, and of course, in the event you have a hard time getting them, uh, our team at the church will provide you with a glove or mask or whatever. Uh, but again, do understand you can also go and get your own supply. And if you run into an emergency and need, need one or two, they will help you with that. But thank you again. Uh, again, I can't breathe. And again, there's uh, social and economical disparities and injustice in our society. And it's gonna take God and Amen. prayer to get us where we need to be. 
Amen. Well, God bless you. We love all we of you. love you. And uh, go ahead, First Lady. We love you and thank the Lord for you and have a blessed week. All right. All right. Elder Tyler, will you give us the uh, benediction, sir? It's on the monitor. Father God, in Jesus' name, this day, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for gathering your children once again, Lord God, and hearing your words that was preached this day, Lord God. Let us hide your words in our heart, Lord God, and as we go forward, Lord God, let no hurt, harms, or dangers come upon us, Lord God. Keep us in your loving arms, Lord God. Keep us in your grace, Father God. Oh, Lord God, we're going through storms, but Father God, we cling, we hold fast to you. So now, Lord God, as we go through this day, through this week, Father God, protect us, guide us, and lead us, and let us always give you honor and give you glory, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Savior. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Now to him that's able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his coming, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Will you say with me, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. All right. God Thank bless you for you. joining Love us. Love you. Enjoy the closing song. God bless you. Amen.